Sub shooters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to this patience video today that I'm making for when how of a track by an act named a uh, Hedgehog titled, this is a bit of a long one, the train goes beyond the clouds and the dream rests in the night skies, in the night skies. And uh, if we switch over to here, wow, I've never heard of Hedgehog before man, this is a brand new one, brand new one, we're gonna listen through this track from start till finish. And here we think we also have some lurks that I've translated through DPAL. Let's go, let's do it. What are we getting ourselves into today? No idea, man. No clue. Okay, this is kind of what I needed, to be honest. I needed something a little bit more uplifting and inspirational today. Okay. Interesting choice with the bass line there and the chord progression and that synth lead on top is extravagant and exactly what I need from a track like this. Oh, it's released in 2018. That wasn't long ago. That was before COVID. So it's like centuries ago, but at the same time, it's four years. Nice, nice bass tone. Got right? a plucky kind of thump to it. Okay, remembering the chord progression we had initially, that's cool. Wow. Again, I love the change in voicing between the synth leads and the and the um, the chorus. I think it's great. Shifts and transitions there. No real complaints about it so far. There's a little bit of compression going on in that mastering chain, but it's not limiting the experience. Excuse the pun. <laughs> That's a mastering joke. I like how the harmony lifts up at the end, that synth lifts up at the end, and you get a little bit of a drum fill there. There's a similar consistency in the perceived loudness in a dynamic range. There's like sound of the words or something like that for the album name. I could have that wrong. Bass solo? Excuse me, I've just got to cough for a minute. Because apparently that's what I'm doing today. It's been a it's been a crazy couple of days. Um really bass solo. Bass solo. Dog. That's cool. I like the fact that we're just letting everything ring out with these chords, the guitars, the, the, the synth pads, the vocals. After that drum bass focus, nice uh, decision there by a Hedgehog. A bit of automation with the panning there. Goes backwards and forwards, you know, can you hear that in the headphones? All the speakers, if you have stereo speakers. The production's a little bit raw, and that isn't a bad thing. It's just not highly polished or sterilized, and I kind of love it for that. I think it would have lost a bit of its uh, oral um, authenticity if it had done that. Kind of gives it a kind of a grassroots, kind of grungy kind of vibe to it, you know? Guitar solo now. What more? What more can you ask for from a band, eh? A drum solo, perhaps? I 
I kind of like how the guitar lead is playing off of some of the vocal melodies there, you know, it's a nice mirror representation of that in a different, a different coloration. And that's a hell of a 6 or 80 synth there. Those little drum fills there, just in the middle of these sections there in this dreamlike state, are charming and what's needed, right? Oh, that higher range stuff, man. The squealies, the turnies. Great use of the higher range of the octave of the lead guitar here. Haven't had it yet, so it's a great way to elevate it. It's kind of wild that the last album is the most popular one. No, rather it's kind of wild the last song of the album is the most popular one. Mm, there we go. Great choice there. Well done, a hedgehog, for that, man. Well done. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Spotify got a little adventurous. So if we just take a moment to digest the lyrics, because we've got the lyrics here, right? We've got the, the, the train goes beyond the clouds and the dream rests in the nine skies. That's my approximation of the translation here um, of, the, of the song title. So I think this is about someone, you know, having dreams that they've always had trying to get towards them, um, eventually getting to a point where they're happy with where they're at and it's almost an out-of-body experience. You know, the songs, the crap songs of mine are scattered all over the world. The clouds of the soul play the sound of anger. Damn, man. So imagine being transcendent and then suddenly realizing that your music was all around the place. The blackness is not the night, but the long loneliness. Seeing the darkness beneath my feet and the brightness of the stars above me. It's kind of beautiful. It, it makes you envision that, you know, being in their position. I, I dig that. True love is the shortest. All things in this world can be wished for, but true love is the shortest. What is lost is never returned. Damn, man. That's some, that's some deep deep stuff the enthusiasm are waving flags and carrying time away the world's tragedy and comedy are in constant rotation day and night a flurry of abuse of men and women but love and hate parting a generation of people who eventually grow old but there are always people who are young damn dude damn man oh what do you go from there because this is my conclusion on my review of and i i have to read this every time because the title was quite long um, the, the translation of it is the train goes beyond the clouds and the dream rests in the nine skies by hedgehog what do i think the song is about i think it's about someone who is having a little bit of introspection there they've found their place in the universe they understand who they are maybe that the the, gra the gravity of what they're, they've accomplished it being spread around they understand that time will continue with or without them the flow of humanity will continue people will get older but they'll always be the young there will be that constant regardless of what happens. The messages in here may always appeal to people depending on how it goes and their legacy may be timeless. I'm not sure outside of that. I, I think like when we talk about true love being short, maybe we realize that we took that for granted. It's an open book, man. I love the uh, intelligence within the, and the introspection within this story that's told here uh, from, from the vocalist, I presume, of Hedgehog. Uh, the singing itself, there's a lot of music with like really conversational tones within stuff I typically listen to from that part of the world and I like the fact that we aren't trying to shove it down people's throats, it's almost like we understand how to talk to the listener about this kind of stuff, you know, we're kind of experiencing that out of body sort of groove there but we're also not freaking out, we're like, yeah, no, this is just where I am right now, I accept it, it's a, it's a time, you know, it's a thing that's occurring but I'm not going to let it destroy me. And I think that, to be honest with you, you know, Hedgehog has a great thing going. I honestly look forward to more of their music in the future, and I genuinely 
wish that wish them all the best the, the, the vocal technique was great you know it was it had timeless sort of sounds to the delivery of it Sound like a lot of the shoegaze kind of indie kind of rock stuff that was coming through in the 90s, 2000s, and 2010s, you know. Uh, I think this will have a large audience of people who may be interested or into it. And uh, yeah, I, I think that the story, the way that the story was told made sense with the tone of it. It was like a young person kind of coping t with the future, like the, 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 the foreverness of what they've managed to, you know, create while accepting that everything is constantly changing. But there's a set flow at the same time as a juxtaposition, a contradiction. So yeah, he hit all the right notes and he sounded like uh, how you'd expect someone to sound when talking about this kind of stuff. So in the end, that was that was very authentic. The structure of this track had, had one sort of main musical motif, bass line, chord progression that was played with different instruments. Sometimes you had a synth focus, sometimes you had guitars, bass and drums, sometimes you had more of a vocal focus. But what made this uh, not, it wasn't a through composed track, it was your typical kind of verse, kind of chorus, maybe it was solo sections what made it interesting was the fact that you had solo sections on like the guitar and the bass they had their own separate chance to sort of shine which i always appreciate i love it when people are allowed to, each band member is allowed to have their own sort of opportunity to express themselves and that synth leader was absolutely phenomenal on top of everything else it was that the, the, it wasn't just the way they were played the way they were staged as well the way they were phrased these there's a lot of put thought into these different uh putting these different facets and i i, I love what the hedgehog have done because of that and it makes me want to listen to the rest of the album, although I won't be able to because I think Opium has not been included, which is a damn shame, man, Opium. Maybe it got banned or something for the mention of Opium, I'm not sure. There's, I think there's worse stuff on Spotify, if we're honest, but, you know, that's okay. I mean, for five and a half minutes, it felt like five and a half seconds. There was just, the, the theme was strong enough combined with the changes to those solo sections and the verse and chorus parts, and just the two minutes long instrument with the whoa kind of vocal stuff at the end. It was great. No, no real complaints about it. Um, the performance instrumentally with the guitar, bass, drums, synths, and other bits were, tr were tremendous. You know, you got the feeling they were playing together in the same room. There was a great chemistry between the instrumentalists there. It sounded like they genuinely considered what parts go best with instruments, and they staged them well and stacked them well on the frequency spectrum. What else? I mean, like I, I look at, I listen to this, and I think, okay. How is the, the phrasing, the simplistic melodic phrasing of some of those lead sections so engaging? And it's because it mirrors some of the stuff I've heard before, but it just sounds different because it's on a different instrument. But it's also, um, there is a complexity to the overall harmony of it, which makes brings it away from like typical major or minor triads where you know, hear those a few times, are like, oh, okay, I get it. It's like a happy or a sad song, right? There was a sense of almost melancholy and bittersweet about this entire experience and the complexity and the harmony and the arrangement mirrored that very well whilst also i think the minimalism of the amount of different instruments was was a key factor to its success as well because you didn't have to constantly be absorbing new things and being over potentially being overwhelmed by it finally uh, we've got ourselves uh you know the production recording mixing mastering which was absolutely splendid i i think that it was uh, that kind of acoustic analog disc kind of groove there fantastic quality of the actual recordings themselves uh, the bass and, and drums and the guitar were well panned and well stacked in the frequency spectrum and stereo field. Um, great effects, change applied to all with a sense of minimalism on that approach as well. We didn't stutter and stumble with like the reverb and delay change. We didn't cake anything in too much foundation. The synth lines had a bit of air to them, but that's exactly what they needed as a lead. Um, the vocals were nice and present in the mix and the limiting compression was absolutely stunning. Uh, no complaints whatsoever on that front. And of course that is, again, that, that's effectively my very positive review of the train goes beyond the clouds and the dream rests in the nine skies. You know, th th this is my conclusion to my SP Patrons video for when how of this track by Hedgehog. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show them some love via their various social medias and their Spotify page. Stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as you need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and I will catch you in the next review. Spider hands up.